So here I'm preparing to work on the mountains in the distance and I've applied a little bit of masking film and just where I want uh, to keep the paper absolutely white and I've been working uh, testing a few colors and um, essentially you're painting the, uh, the snow color and the shadow and the rocks and for that I'm using um, primarily indigo with a little bit of um, Prussian, not much, uh, and a little bit of cerulean and also uh, some black. And, and mixtures of those uh, colors uh, primarily is what I'm doing for the mountains. And since they're the further away they are, the more uh, they lean to the blue side and they should be faint and nothing is super distinct. Um, I'm working on the paper uh, that's reasonably dry here and I'm using a liner brush uh, with, it's kind of a, um, a good sized one with fairly long bristles and concentrating on putting in some of the, uh, the, the shaded areas to begin with. And, you know, if you've ever studied um, ice and seen all the blues uh, that are reflected in the um, crystals of the ice, um, it's something you also see with snow. And from a distance, of course, it's not quite as vivid, so you've got to tone it down a little. That's why I add a little bit of black. But the, the indigo... Um, contains that also and so it's a good it's a good color for the distant hills um, because um, we have this atmospheric perception when we look over long distances and the colors of the actual colors of things are of course um, modified by the atmosphere and you know as in purple mountains from a distance, you know, which of course are not, but they do kind of appear, you know, to lean toward the violet uh, at times and um, snow covered peaks look like they're a light blue. So um, yeah, everything's affected by the atmosphere. And you know, the little, it, it has to do with uh, light refracted in the water, part, water particles and uh, I won't go into all of that, but uh, at any rate, it's what we observe. So working here, I'm trying to um, work primarily from light to dark. And this is kind of the wet stage where I'm putting in some of the bigger shadows. Um, some of these mountains are going to be in the shadow of the clouds, which casts you know, a little darker um, value to the whole thing. And, but there are areas on these mountains that are going to be direct sun and they're going to be left uh, where the snow is exposed. It's going to be really white. And I'm just touching in here with a, on some of the papers reasonably wet. And I'm um, working all the way across and uh, just using the tip of the brush and kind of tapping. Um, is the technique and uh, once this first phase dries and it won't be long I'll be removing the I'll be removing some of that um, frisket film So at this point, I have removed the uh, masking film and the paper is dried from my first application. And, uh, and now I'm starting to do some more fine work, detailed work, uh, putting in some darks for rocks and um, dark shadows uh, on the snow. And and it's still keeping the same mixture. It's primarily indigo and black and a little cerulean and touch of Prussian here and there. 
And <clears throat> I do think it's effective. It pushes it uh, way into the distance. Um, however, this uh, is, again, part of the painting that's a little bit like drawing. I, I have resource material I'm looking at off camera. I've got photos that I've taken of these mountains. I think I showed them earlier. And I'm referring to those, but um, just moving along slowly and uh, carefully and essentially just just drawing and uh, drawing with my liner brush. So what I'll do here, um, I'll drop out for a minute and uh, accelerate the uh, video and then also uh, put a little music in the background. I've made the mistake of trying to talk over the music and it doesn't seem to work too well because it conflicts. So um, when I have a little more explanation, my next part of the uh, uh, process here, which will be the hills uh, that are coming toward the foreground, I will jump back in.
So here I've begun uh, working on the hills. Um, they're not snow covered, but they're quite a ways away. And uh, the palette's changed a little bit, but um, it's primarily earth tones. Um, I might uh, in places be using a little bit of uh, alizarin and um, burnt sienna, kind of, uh, a variety of browns, but uh, there's also going to be a hint of green in this, of course. And I'm using um, because they are, it is these hills are treed, although they've been logged in places, so there's kind of some earth exposure. Uh, and some areas are being uh, have, are in more direct light, so they're going to be a little bit brighter, but uh, to push them way back. Uh, first of all, we've got to keep in mind that things that are the most distant are going to um, have the least amount of uh, intensity or chroma or saturation of color. So we want to keep it um, kind of uh, subdued the further away we are. And then as we work toward the foreground, from, so we're coming from top down, as we get lower, uh, things are getting closer to us and uh, the colors can be richer but um, the paper here is essentially dry uh, just a wet brush and that's because I'm dragging up some um, tone some dry brush effects across that will blend into the subsequent layers are gonna be going on top of it and these um, layers here can be off color in that they were going to combine with the uh, layers that are laid on top of them. So it, if it looks odd to be putting down uh, some crimson or some yellow ochre or even some orange, it's because um, there'll be other values laid on top of that. And um, they might come through to a degree, but uh, I think pr this is predominantly going to be, you know, an overall feeling is going to be green with some earth tones and variations of green that looks like evergreen trees from a distance. That's the, uh, that's the main objective. But also, uh, I would really want to emphasize that the further away you are, the lighter uh, these hills will appear to be. And also, um, the more washed out in terms of color. So uh, you don't want to go bright and you don't want to go intense with color. You want to keep it dilute. And uh, so lots of water when you uh, put on your, your layers. And... Um, don't be in a hurry. Don't don't grab a huge brush to do this. Uh, you'll have a lot more interest in it if you do some things underneath, like what I'm working on here. Um, you know, there are ridges back there. There are uh, areas that have, uh, you know, different types of trees, and there's different types of earth, and there's, of course, variation in the elevations, and all of those things combine to create different colors. So um, I don't want to just take a big soft brush and swoop it across. Uh, it just flattens everything out. And I like to feel like as I'm painting, I'm actually feeling the, the ridges and the cliffs and, you know, the, the, the areas that are elevated and then the, ele the areas that are sunken so that the uh, shading makes sense to me and so i'm kind of processing that as i'm as i'm painting um as i work my way down it'll, it'll be getting darker and darker to the um the horizon line that uh will the actual horizon line the flat horizon line that exists through the middle of this uh, composition is the water level that's really the, your eye level and uh, working down to that things get darker and darker I'm probably uh, 
be an hour on this at least. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my accelerated video and some more music and you can watch what I'm doing because I'm going pretty slow on it. I've got both palettes working here. I've got the, the, the one that contains most of my blues and some grays and then I also have um, the palette with all my earth tones and uh, I keep going back and forth and at times I'm going to be letting this kind of sit and dry and if I get something too uh, too heavy on there I can blot it or I can just use some water and lift it but I just want to build this up kind of slowly as I go and, and try to envision a, a real landscape back here. I couldn't actually see one because my print is not very good that I'm using for reference here. I printed one of my photos and it just came out really dark. But um, I've done these kinds of hills before I and I know the area and I know what's there and I know how I want to approach it. So uh, it's laborious but it's also fun for me. Um, it might be laborious for you. <laughs> so I'll try to make it more entertaining with a little bit more music and uh, a little quicker on the video here.
So I've been working my way down and it's getting darker and darker and a little more color. So uh, you can actually see some green, um, some of the undertones, uh, some of the layers underneath are beginning to combine and they create um, a little more interest uh, in elevation change and also in um, the depth of the color. Um, it's really uh, kind of washed out in the distance and as it comes down to the water line, which I've protected with some uh, masking fluid, uh, it gets richer and richer, deeper and deeper, uh, and darker. So all of those things are happening. You've got uh, more color, more saturation, and uh, darker values. So those things all happen naturally uh, with our perception of distance, and that's uh, part of creating um, atmospheric uh, perspective. Um, so that's just how the eye works. Um, and it, sometimes it's unlike a camera um, because cameras, uh, I think, uh, exceed what our eyes are capable of and so they're by creating sharper focus in places that we wouldn't normally have it or even um, more vivid color. Uh, so I'm putting down some darks and I'm, then I'm doing a, a little bit of a lift and softening as I, I go across. Um, there's quite a bit of water on the paper and I continue to use that method um, and to delineate one set of hills from the next, uh, it's usually just a matter of creating one. It's either going to be a slight change in color, but more likely it's a, it's a change in uh, value so that one is uh, lighter than the next. Uh, often uh, on the backside of a ridge, uh, I will kind of soften with water and do a little pickup so that it lightens it up and that kind of looks makes it look like a valley um, and the ridge will be a, a little bit sharper delineation uh, when they're closer to you so this is sort of the fun part here and uh, if that doesn't look level to you uh, it's just because my board isn't straight across to the camera but uh, here still I'm I've got some resource photos I'm using, but frankly, I'm abandoning, abandoning them uh, for what I know because um, they're just very dark and uh, I want more interest here. So <clears throat> dabbing in uh, some color and letting it move around with the water and the water is pulling it. So I'm right down here now, I'm right on the, um, the water line and I'll be moving up and uh, this ridge will be completely dark on the left and I got a little bit of color on my house, so I'm going to have to be careful with that. I'll probably just do a lift right there and use a tissue and Another trick for if you make an error where you get some color on an area that you know you're going to need to be to have as white, you can let everything dry, put some masking film on it, and masking film will actually uh, lift color um, to, a, to an extent, and not completely, it's not like a whitewash, but it will remove what you can't get by dabbing and mopping. So um, you want to do that sparingly though because masking film on its removal, it kind of uh, disturbs the, the paper a little bit and roughens it up somewhat. So uh, on this painting, it doesn't really matter that there's um, a few splatters here and there because it's, you know, 
going to have a lot of rock and water and ground showing here in the foreground and uh, the place that I was really concerned about getting anything splattered or uh, would be up in the clouds and in the sky also the white of the building so I'm trying to protect those things but kind of down here where my palette is and where I have my test paper I'm not really uh, too worried about it so I'm going to keep going at this and working my way down I'm going to be uh, going into the, my next uh, phase here in the next video will be um, the, uh, the the canal uh, water itself which is kind of simple in this painting and then um, I'll be doing the front of the the uh, ground here in front of the building which has some big puddles and uh, gonna have some reflections and then there's a big rockery so I'm just gonna keep working my way down but I'm going to speed this one up a little and uh, a little more music and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.